Welcome to Lamoille Soil, which is probably um, the newest and might argue the best composting facility in Vermont, maybe even in all of New England. Thanks for coming out today. Really appreciate you all being here. Um, I'm every time I come here, I just am totally overwhelmed. Is that in the way? Sorry. I'm overwhelmed because it's amazing what we've been able to do with not a lot of resources, but a lot of willpower and a lot of help from a lot of people. So you're, you are it. You're the ones that really helped make this all happen. Um, so I'm not, I'm going to try not to talk too much, but, um, I do have a lot of people that I want to, uh, recognize today. And whenever I get here, I just go, wow, this is really pretty amazing. And, um, my emotions seem to vacillate between being sort of immensely proud and, amazingly um, appreciative of everything that's happened to make this come together. So it has been a two-year journey, maybe a little bit over two years now, um, and that's not without challenges as any project is. Um, it's, you know, compost. It shouldn't be that difficult, but there are a lot of moving parts, believe it or not, to getting this all to happen. So um, we're going to talk about why we're here in the opening celebration because of all the folks that really got us here today. So a little history. In case you don't know, we're sitting on the um, closed Johnson landfill. So kind of right over my shoulder, not, not where we're standing here, but over my shoulder here, that's the unlined capped landfill that Johnson used traditionally for years and years and years as their disposal for everything, right? That's how we managed things many, many years ago. So it's probably been closed a couple of decades, and I'm looking at people here from the state who probably know better than I do exactly when that happened, but it's um, been closed and monitored for a couple of decades, and when that happened, right through this tree line, which you can't see, is our transfer station that we opened where we collect um, trash, recycling, and I don't know, 15 other things, tires, batteries, the whole complement of um, materials that can be managed outside the landfill. And it's really only because we can provide convenience and access that we are as, as successful as we are in getting those things away from the landfill. So, um, so that is the Johnson landfill. That's the transfer station. And this facility is... Um, was originally built in the mid-1990s. I think Meredith's here, she can correct me if I'm wrong. Mid-1990s um, as the biosolids composting facility for the village of Johnson's wastewater treatment facility. So they, through a series of state and federal grants, built this amazing facility. It was to be used as a windrow composting facility, so the pad was wide open. and. Um, Operated only for a few years because of a series of operational issues and generally negative public sentiment about land application of biosolids that have been composted. So, um, so there's this three parts of this facility all owned by the town of Johnson. The infrastructure here is the villages, and we've been able to use it and put it again to good municipal service use for probably about 20 years now. So we knew that this was here. Um, and then along came, you know, that this was abandoned 15 years ago, but we'd been using it a little bit for our maintenance because it's right next to our transfer station. And then roll forward to around 2012 when Act 148 was passed. Does anyone here not know what Act 148 is? We're going to let Emily get a go a pass on this because she's from D.C. <laughs> And she knows, all right. <laughs> so also known as the Universal Recycling Law, which put in place a series of phased-in requirements for removing our food waste, our food scraps, our clean wood, and other organics from the landfill with the idea that by 2020, there would be an all-out ban on organics in landfill and put those materials to a higher and better use, just like we do now at the transfer station with many of the things that used to go over there. So um, when that happened, um, there were an awful lot of private and public entities that, oh my gosh, what are we going to do? 
we were among them. Um, but a lot of facilities were, uh, management, uh, material management companies were able to really rise to the occasion quickly, put things in place. Um, Looking, where's Dan? We have Dan Gosen here from Chittenden County. They were able to put together uh, a tremendous sum of money, I'm assuming, Dan, to build an incredibly first-rate composting facility over in Williston. Um, Green Mountain Compost, you've probably seen their products all over. They have some incredible soil amendments that they make as well as bulk product. So they were able to do that as a municipality. Um, there's an organization, a private company in the southern part of the state called TAM. They, were, they went to the bank. They took Act 148 and went to the bank and said, hey, we really believe in this. We want this to happen. And there's this law to back it up. So the bank's like, sure, we'll lend you money. And they invested heavily in equipment and infrastructure. And they're making terrific compost down there. So, um, so great things were happening. Despite that, all over, things happening all over, we were still sitting here with no real plan for how we were going to manage those materials. Um, in fact, at tw in 2016, this is when this whole NBRC program started, in 2016, um, we were staring right in the face of an, a requirement that on July 1 of 2017, we would have to collect food scraps at every one of the six facilities that we manage. So. The collection part, not so hard to figure out. What do we do with them once we have them? A bigger, bigger, larger, huger, complicated, but fun thing to have to grapple with. So um, around the same time, the Agency of Natural Resources put together um, one of the maps that showed all the composting facilities in existence at that time around the state. And there were several dots, some really respectable facilities like Chittenden and Tam, they had some really good ones, uh, uh, Black Dirt Farm, Grow Compost, and then around each one of those dots on the map, they drew a 20-mile radius circle, which is sort of the standard for access and convenience for compost, for managing your food scraps. Outside of that, you're kind of wondering, why am I going this far to manage those? So um, what became immediately obvious was this very large gap in that map that rested right above Ch uh, Lamoille County. So we were kind of feeling really exposed because this map was everywhere. And most of the state was covered. And there was this sort of funny little circle right here that didn't, um, we didn't know what we were going to do. So just when things were looking fairly grim about how we were going to make this deadline within a year, uh, we became aware of the um, Northern Borders Regional Commission grant, and we have John O'Rourke here from that uh, entity. We're going to give him a chance to talk about that a little bit more. Um, but we became aware of that, and we realized that um, it was a good fit. It's a grant that looks towards economic and infrastructure development for government and nonprofits in the northern border counties, so Caledonia, Essex, Lamoille. Franklin. So um, it sort of came to us at that time, we had this perfect trifecta. We had a looming deadline, so we were highly motivated to find a solution. We had an existing facility that wasn't really being utilized, and we had a potential source of funding. So the light bulbs went off, we got awfully excited about it, and um, we kind of jumped into it with both feet. So, um, as many of you know, um, and maybe the rest of you can imagine if you don't, but applying for a federal grant is not really easy money, right? <laughs> so we were like, oh, matching grant, 50%, this is great. And then we started looking at grant language, which is probably not my highest uh, skill set, and uh, realized there were things called outcomes and outputs, and I didn't even know what the difference was between the two, and got kind of crazy and frustrating, but um, we, the more we delved into it and the more we settled into saying, okay, we're going to do this grant, the more we realized that we had a really compelling story to tell. And it wasn't just that our project would meet the criteria of the grant, but also that um, we had connections with so many other partners in the community and uh, across the state, actually, and that our proposal, therefore, really merited um, not just a glance, but we thought we had a really good uh, ch shot at this. So um, I'm just going to mention a few, but there are people here representing many of these entities, so I'll let them, you can chat with them a little bit more, but um, 
on a, re or on a local level, we had the town of Johnson in 2015 had, um, I guess actually 2016, so the same year that we were putting this grant together, um, had put their town plan together. And I'm paraphrasing a little bit, but I'm also going to read because, believe it or not, I haven't memorized everybody's plan. So um, the town of Johnson documented support for agricultural and conservation efforts, including locally produced food. So composting is part of that food system. It further called for an efficient system of public facilities and services. Here we are. Um, and I don't know, many of us believe that waste management is actually a utility. And it's probably like the other utility, like pork is the other red meat or white meat, you know. So because water and light are things that we all feel we can't live without, but you can't live without waste management services either. As best our efforts are at zero waste, at the end of the day, you need us. You need composting, you need recycling, you need uh, reuse. So it, we figure that we fit right in with any utility plans as well and any municipal services. Um, on the regional level, um, the Lamoille County Planning Commission updated their plan. And again, I'm going to read that um, their language says, community investments such as municipal services will aid in attracting development opportunities. So basically, if you build it, they will come. And again, we are a good utility. We are a good partner to have in a community. And um, they further go on to say in their plan, they have policy and action items, which include um, the need for adequate collection facilities, including increased access to composting sites. So really, we didn't pay them to write this. They came to this conclusion on their own. But wow, we were reading their plans going perfect. Um, and then the Vermont Sustainable Job Funds, which as many of you know, is a statewide entity that really focuses on um, energy, agriculture, waste management, um, what else do they do, forestry, and they put together the farm to plate strategy a number of years ago and their goal number 14 reads, paraphrasing, consumer food scraps will be diverted from landfills and it will be used to produce animal feed, compost and feedstock for anaerobic digesters. So really, again, perfect fit, local, regional, statewide, and then really getting into the heavy economics folks is the Vermont Comprehensive Economic Development Strategy for 2020. Vermont SEDS, it's known as, right? So they've got four strategies that they've outlined, all of which touch on this to some extent. I won't go into the detail, but it does recognize the working landscape as one of the most important economic sectors to target. So. While we had our own motivations and agendas, we also knew that we fit in very well with a bunch of other projects, programs, plans all over the state. And maybe this overview is too simple to convince you, but we did manage to convince the Vermont Agency of Commerce and Community Development that this project was worthy of forwarding to NBRC for their consideration for funding. And we could not have done that without Jared Duval, who I understand is no longer at VACCD, and, but he's still in this state, right? Okay, because he's phenomenal. And, and he brilliantly walked us through a lot of that grant language and helped us articulate exactly how all of our outcomes would, be, would bring to bear good things for the economic development, infrastructure development. And um, so thank you to Jared, who's not here. And I'm not sure if Carrie. Corrigan, I think it's his replacement. She's not here. Okay. Anyway, VACCD, thank you so much for that help. And then we also knew that we had other community partners, and I just want to recognize them. The Village of Johnson, we have Meredith Burkett right here. She is the manager for, administrator, manager for the Village of Johnson, who owns this wonderful infrastructure. And we came to Meredith early on in the process, and we said we have this shot at this grant. We have to do this because this is a requirement. We need to have a place where we can bring our, our food scraps. And there's no sense in taking those food scraps out of the landfill where we're worried about methane if we have to drive them and put a lot more carbon back in the air long distances. So we wanted a local solution. And um, I don't think it was too much of a hard sell. We are good neighbors. We've operated right next door for a long time. And so we 
I think they felt we would be excellent stewards of their property here. Um, it is a composting facility, and part of our agreement with the village is that they use this for biosolids, and we have committed to working with them to see if there is a better and higher use for their biosolids, which currently go to the landfill. And um, like many communities in this state, they produce a Class B biosolid, biosolids, which in Vermont can be composted and land applied. Public sentiment isn't really crazy about land application, as you all know, looking at what happens with Lake Champlain in the news for the last 10 years. Um, biosolids is yet another challenge, but we are committed to it. We, we understand that with good quality chemistry and with good management, they do not necessarily have to be in the landfill. So um, we've been meeting with um, the state's expert, Eamon Twoig, I'm told, is the best in all of New England. We're lucky to have him. And um, Ernie Christensen, we worked with a little bit before he left, and the director of the New England uh, Biosolids and Residual Association. So we've been engaging them in conversations, and we will continue to work with them to see if there is, um, you know, what's the feasibility for doing something different with their biosolids. We need to get another cycle or two of composting under our belt before we're ready to tackle that, but um, who knows what could happen next. So thank you to the Village of Johnson. Meredith, you really helped us out, marshalling that right through. Really, really appreciate that. Um, are, you, are your trustees here? I don't want to ignore them. Nope, okay. If you're a Village of Trustee, no, okay. <laughs> um, all right, so uh, moving on then, Ellen Kaler from the Vermont Sustainable Job Funds and Tasha Wallace from Lamoille County Planning Commission wrote amazing letters of support. Um, Where's Ali Zipara? I think I surprised Ali when I asked her to come here and speak today. She's from the Agency of Agriculture, and I met her at our very first informational meeting with the NBRC folks and um, Jared Duval. And Jared was walking us through goals and strategies and criteria, and I kept going, wow, compost, compost. It just, everything kept happening. And after the meeting, I run into Ali in the hall. I think maybe Josh Kelly was there. And all of a sudden, that was really the first spark that said, guess what, we're going to do this. We're going to pursue this grant. So we all went down. I think Ali, myself, and Josh, and maybe Kathy got in a room, and we're like, this is what we're going to do, and we're going to get this money from NBRC. Did you know how much money they have? Anyway. <laughs> We got really excited, so thank you so much, Allie. And she's going to um, talk a little bit about how we overlap with agriculture and their priority programs as well. And then, um, really, the Agency of Natural Resources, Kathy, uh, Becca, I think Eric is here. I'm not sure who else is here. Um, you know, Dennis Fecker and uh, Ben Gauthier, and I'm going to forget people, Ernie and Eamon. Um, not only did they write a letter of support, but they gave us a ton of their time up front providing technical assistance before we even, you know, put uh, and a word on a page for the grant, and then all through the grant process. And I just want to say that I know the Vermont per permitting process gets a really bad rap sometimes, but I am really happy to say that throughout this whole process, we never encountered any of the frustrations that you hear. It's time consuming. It's complicated. Nobody returns my call. It's frustrating. It, um, Chris Duff, my manager, will tell you, it went really, really well, and they are very kind and helpful people. So kudos to the entire agency. We look forward to continuing a great partnership. Um, yeah, we're like, right? We're attached at the hip. They do waste management for the state. We do it regionally. James McSweeney, who isn't here today, works for Compost Technical Services. Uh, he provided the technical, uh, technical assistance on all of the design and construction, handed us over a set of plans. Names and brands of fans, the costs, every block, you know, he did this all. Unfortunately, he couldn't be here, um, so, but we want to give a shout out to Compost Technology Services. He also is someone who used to work uh, for Highfields, which is a um, facility or an organization that no longer exists, but that's kind of where he cut his teeth working with our, our facility operator. Um, and actually, that work was all paid for by the Agency of Natural Resources as well through their grant program that we didn't even have to apply to. Someone else applied and got the grant, and we just got the benefit of the services, so that was awesome. All right, and so here we are off and running on this project, and we're up and running, and there's an opportunity for yet another partnership to form, and that is with um, an organization called High Meadows Fund, and they um, share our mission for 
food scraps and composting and food systems. So um, we have Nina McDonald here today. Gay may or may not be able to make it, Gay Symington. Um, and given the opportunity to tout their philanthropy, they declined gracefully in the interest of getting on to the really cool stuff. And um, But I think we should give a shout out to High Meadows and, and Gay and Nina for working through this with us. So what th we've been able to do with their money, oh my gosh, this is like Christmas, I just realized. Everybody gives us money. Um, we did this. They paid for all this wonderful branding and graphics work. See a great t-shirts. Um, and as many of you know, half the battle with composting is marketing it. So we can collect it and we can make it, but we got to get it out there. And we got people who want to buy it and pay for it and use it appropriately. So the branding program was really important. Uh, they also helped us buy uh, totes, uh, which are the big garbage can size containers. If you don't know what a tote is, 32, 40 gallon containers that we have at all our facilities where the residents come, drop off their food scraps, and then they're brought here to be managed. In addition, the one other thing that we're using their uh, wonderful, generous grant money for is um, to produce a video on the uses and benefits of compost. And our videographer is here in the back. That's Krista Mers. And don't be surprised if he taps you on the shoulder and you get a little bit of a cameo in our video. So thank you very much, Hi Meadows, and thanks for being here, Nina. Really appreciate it. Um, last but not least, and I will wrap this up because I know we all want to get going, but um, I have the best staff in the world. I cannot tell you how many times Ellie should have disowned me. Where is Ellie? <laughs> Clearly should have disowned me because um, it was many, many iterations, many, many sessions of wordsmithing because I get really picky about certain things. Um, editing all our electronic documents. This is just on the front end of putting this um, application together. So without her, that application wouldn't have gotten in. And I did torture her uh, relentlessly, but it was a great application because of her efforts at the end of the day. So um, I think the only other reason, too, that she there wasn't a full-out mutiny is because Ellie is incredibly passionate about her work. Every day she makes us better at being better stewards and at reducing the amount of waste we manage, especially when it comes to organic. She does it all. She's got the red worms. She's got the, I don't even know how to say it, and I'm Mbashi, Bakashi, Japanese under the kitchen sink fermentation digester thing going on. Uh, the, the green cone, the compost bins in the backyard, she does it all. And um, yeah. She's pretty incredible. We're very lucky to have her. And uh, she's also done, along with the branding she facilitated, she also put together all the um, collateral materials. We've got uh, these great little buckets, and they've got all, everything that can go in and things that can't go in, magnets, outreach and education, our customers, our residents, uh, our staff, businesses. She does an incredible amount of training, all with such a great sense of humor and dedication. Um, and she also thought to put together swag bags for you all today. So after the tour, circle back under the tent because she's going to have some nice little things for you at the end of the day. All right, really trying to wrap this up, sorry. Um, but there's so much. There's so many great things that are going on here. Uh, a year ago, almost exactly, right, Chris? We hired Chris Duff, who is our facility operator here. Um, I don't know, Chris, you've been making compost maybe as long as you've been growing that braid? I don't know, like a long, long time. <laughs> he is um, not only a great neighbor that I have, and our kids have kind of grown up together, um, worked with Highfields, and I was on the board of Highfields for years, and, and Chris was, you know, one of the major uh, players in getting that whole thing up and going. So imagine my surprise when we were looking to hire someone that Chris was not only uh, interested, but he was available to help us out. So I think we just basically handed him this plan and said, here's the plan, here's the money, but don't worry because you have a deadline, you have all these federal grant requirements, you're going to do things that you've never imagined doing before, having spent most of your life composting, we're going to make you fill out forms and do spreadsheets, and anyway, he's brilliantly ro risen to the occasion, and as, as professional as we might um, expect, and uh, I think to date we have diverted 38 tons of food scraps, 
from the landfill. That, that was starting on July 1 of last year, so not even a year under our belts. And that's what you're going to see here. And I think starting tomorrow, we're taking orders for our first batch of Lamoille soil. Right? Thanks, Chris. It's, it's no small feat. And then I just want to acknowledge, we have a couple other staff people here. Joyce Majors, who's our veteran administrations, uh, operations administrator. And um, you can thank her for all the food that's here today. She's also a great party planner and logistics person. But I have to thank Joyce because she um, persevered and uh, worked with me through all these. She does all the financials. So she's the one who had to keep track of every dollar Chris was spending that I would say move here and he would say move there and then all the reporting. And John, this is not a reflection of MBRC. It's more a reflection on my, well, it was really actually our first federal grant. So um, thank you, Joyce. I, I, yeah, a amazing work that you do for us. Um, and then we also have uh, Sujata Guadam, who is our um, AmeriCorps volunteer, and she's been with us. She came from Texas with a degree in environmental engineering and landed here. Loves waste management, loves sustainable solutions, and she is um, coordinating our Waste Warrior program. And so we have one of our Waste Warriors here in the back. That's Andrea, who was helping you park. <laughs> and um, so we get these residents of our community that are willing to join our, our, our organization as volunteers and they go out and they work at events and they help us like at things like today and when they're, whether, you know, they're at their knitting circle or their cocktail parties, they're always, you know, talking about waste management and how we should be doing a better job. So thank you to you. And in fact, Sujata is so good at getting volunteers together. She actually got her sister, Suva, back here in the corner to come join us from Texas as well today. So, all right. And we also have to thank our board of supervisors. So we have Carl Whitkey. Um, raise your hand. Charles Cooley, uh, Adrian Owens, I'm going to miss somebody eventually, Phil Wilson, um, oh my gosh. <laughs> I wanted to say Harold. We have a Howard and a Harold, and we always get them confused. This is Howard Dutasek. And did I miss anybody, Phil? And Kathy, Amanda Adams, who is also one of our Waste Warriors. So oh, thank you to all of you, because every day you're volunteering your time and your energy. And I have to say, sometimes you put a lot of faith in what we're doing, and I can't tell you how much I appreciate that. Sometimes it's blind faith, and we don't always know what the end point's going to look like, but you've given us a lot of trust, and we appreciate it. And I know someday soon you will be very happy, because this will become a net neutral profit center for the organization. I guarantee it. Yeah, that's all I'm going to say. <laughs> all right, so I think I have uh, overstepped my time limit here, and um, but really, seriously, it's so exciting to be here. I hope you love our facility as much as we do, and um, I'm going to turn it over. I have a few people that I would love to give some um, have give some comments today. Um, we have Erica Campbell from Senator Sanders' office, who, without our Washington delegation, this money wouldn't come to us. So, Erica, you want to give a few words, maybe? Hi everyone, um, I'm so happy to be here today and I know that um, Bernie would have loved to have been up here as well um, and I really wish that he was because this is really amazing. I could have actually kept listening to you, Susan. <laughs> I mean, I, I find this story incredibly inspiring. Um, yeah, so Senator Sanders sends a really huge, big congratulations for this work. I remember when, you know, when Act 148 started and I thought this is so incredible and this is going to be so hard um, and then I started to see you know the people doing solid waste work like joining in with the hunger folks and like people doing creative problem solving um, and so I feel like at the local regional state level it's been phenomenal there's still definitely a lot work of work left um, I'm here with my colleague Emily Rampone from DC and we are kind of always thinking about how can we find more ways to support this work at the federal level. Not that you necessarily want to do more federal grants, Susan, but um, <laughs> um, but you know this this money from Northern Borders Regional Commission is like really it's 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 um I think it's really important that you know it that's that is a, a great federal state partnership program 
that funds a lot of different kind of things. And this, this is um, a great start to thinking about how we can further fund the infrastructure and education um, for reaching the goals of Act 148, um, as well as reaching our rural um, economic development goals for, for the state. Um, so I think that's all I want to say. I just really am so happy to be here today. I'm really excited for the tour. Um, and again, Senator Sanders just really um, congratulates, appreciates you all and congratulates you on this like incredible partnership um, and hard work that you've done. So thank you. Just wait until the Senator sees what's in his swag bag and he will really be happy. <laughs> Um, I'm going to ask John O'Rourke from NBRC, Northern Borders Regional Commission, to come on up and chat with us a little bit. Um, this is where it all happens, and uh, we've been working with Christine. She wasn't able to be here today. We're happy to have John here from Concord, New Hampshire. What did you say? You manage 94 different grant programs right now? Three of us, yes. Three of them. 94 grant programs across four states, and another grant round is just happening now, so good luck. Thank you. Whoop. Didn't mean to trick it. But we had to make it a little bit more complicated, so. <laughs> um, I, for those of you that don't know, I'm Jonathan O'Rourke with the Northern Border Regional Commission. Um, Christine Frost, couldn't say enough great things about you all and the project. This is just a fantastic project. And talking with you all, even just briefly going around and seeing all the partnerships and how everybody came together, it's, it's really fantastic. Um, at MBRC, uh, we're a partnership between the federal government, the states of Maine, New Hampshire, Vermont, and New York. Um, promoting economic growth and projects in the northeastern, north, northern areas of the member states. Um, we are honored to be involved in this project, working toward accomplishing community goals of economic development, growth, and uh, of all the member states, and resiliency. Um, basically, we want to take this opportunity to just, you know, recognize all of your hard work and your dedication. Uh, it's, you know, takes a village, right? <laughs> and it's, uh, it's, it's amazing to see everything come together. You talk about all the little pieces earlier, how much it took, and just all this hard work and all the dedication that you all did to bring this project to fruition is fantastic. And we just want to thank you for your selfless dedication to this project, for staff, volunteers, federal officials, state government, everybody, uh, local officials as well. Um, we hope to work with you and future partners moving forward. Um, Maybe you want to do some more paperwork again in the future and submit some things, and maybe we can make something happen, hopefully. Um, and it, it, it rolls off the tongue just like the Moyle soil. I like it. <laughs> um, so thank you again, and um, you know, we hope to use the Moyle soil composting facility as an example um, of a successful and beneficial project. So um, thank you, and congratulations to you all. Are we perhaps the only composting facility you funded? Okay. Yeah, there you go. We'll, we'll let that one go. I just expect an email Monday morning letting me know who's our competition out there. <laughs> Thanks so much, John. Appreciate you coming all the way for this. It's awesome. Um, and then I'm going to ask Rebecca Ellis to come up, who's the Deputy Commissioner of the Department of Environmental Conservation and um, just one of the most wonderful partners we have is their organization. So here you go. Thank you, Susan. Um, so on behalf of the Agency of Natural Resources and the Department of Environmental Conservation and the staff who are here today, hi, all of you staff, <laughs> um, we really want to congratulate the district um, along with the town and the village on the successful launching of Lamoille soil. And it's really exciting news that we can start ordering our Lamoille soil starting tomorrow, because I'll be first on your list as I rebuild my rock garden. Um, this project is such a great example of the vision that was laid out by the legislature in 2012 with the passage of the Universal Recycling Act. And since I was in the legislature in, in my former role as a legislator um, in 2012, I take particular pleasure in attending today's event. And I actually sat on the House Natural Resources and Energy Committee, so we spent really a whole session talking about this law and what was going to happen if we passed this law. Um, and one of the things that you may know is that organics, including the food scraps and leaf and yard debris, 
constitute more than a quarter of Vermont's um, residential solid waste stream. So getting organics out of the solid waste stream is a really important um, objective of the Universal Recycling Act. Um, the 2012 law adopted a hierarchy of uses for food scraps, um, from food rescue to composting. And one of the great serendipitous um, successes of the law was actually the huge increase in food donations to food banks. So as a result of the act, food donations to the food bank nearly doubled. Um, so that means that we have fewer people going hungry and also more people getting access to fresh and healthy foods. Another um, priority for food scraps in the hierarchy of food scraps um, is composting. And you may know this, but with the launch of Lamoille Soil, um, Vermont now has a total of 13 certified composting facilities. And as Susan mentioned, um, we look at um, the 20 mile radius around each certified facility. And this particular facility um, fills an important gap that we used to see in the middle of Vermont. And so now almost all of Vermont is covered within the 20 mile radiuses with a couple of small areas in the Northeast Kingdom and a southern strip of Vermont, but those I'm sure will be filled soon as well. Um, and having a local composting facility provides both a cost-effective and um, convenient service for haulers and generators of organics in this area. Um, so Susan touched upon some of the benefits of composting, but I just wanted to make sh sure that we reinforce those, that they're really a great way, composting is a great way to reduce greenhouse gas emissions compared to putting um, food waste into the landfill. It supports local green jobs. Um, it reduces the need for landfill space, and it produces a great soil product for gardens, lawns, and even construction projects. Um, and finally, I think it's great that this site is an example of the reuse of, a, of infrastructure. Um, and I applaud the town, the village, and the district for working together and collabor collaborating in order to transform this infrastructure and to put it to productive reuse. Collaboration takes a lot of time and effort, um, but it's really clearly paid off. And I also want to thank um, and recognize again all of the many organizations that participated in funding this project and your um, story of all of that cooperation is really um, amazing to hear. So congratulations and best wishes and thank you everybody for being here today. Thanks, Rebecca. I had almost forgotten that you were in that room during the early days of the discussions of Act 148. Is that why you don't work there anymore? <laughs> it was, yeah. And it's interesting, you and Tony Klein both are no longer there. Hmm. OK. <laughs> What's that? And Dave Dean, yeah. OK, just one. That's right, that's right. So we have one more person I'd like to have come up and speak, and this is Ellie Zapparo from the Agency of Agriculture, who, as I mentioned earlier, she was there the day that the light bulb went off. So I'm really happy to have her here today. Thank you, Ellie. Thank you, Susan. Well, uh, I can't believe it's been two years, and uh, this is actually happening. And honestly, the, the reason I invested in it is to enjoy the Vermont spread that's back there. Um, <laughs> That's the real economic benefit. Um, there is so much great food back there, and it's almost all Vermont products, so nicely done. Uh, Agency of Agriculture, Food and Markets promotes uh, you know, economic development around food and agriculture. Um, that's the division I work in, and as Susan mentioned, um, we work collaboratively with partners on all kinds of things. And you might wonder why compost and why diverting food scraps from the uh, waste stream. And um, really, we have a really strong relationship with Agency of Natural Resources. I manage the Farm to School program for the state, and it's, it's a huge part of our program there. And also, it has a lot to do with um, soil health, which is an important aspect of water quality. So we, you know, felt the proposal would, you know, increase sustainable activities around the working landscape, which is what our agency does. Um, 
is, and also could promote food security and also um, you know, really have innovative ways of creating jobs in the area. And, and we've seen that, and we'll continue to see that. Um, and the grant proposal itself, we felt, was you know, really aligned with the economic development, food access, and environmental elements of, of our agency's mission. So it was really a no-brainer to, to support this project. And um, you know, it's just humbling and inspiring to be here today among all of you. Um, this was a collaborative effort that we knew had really good legs. It had um, a good basis to it. And it had a really great uh, leader and leaders working on it. So um, it's, it's just really wonderful to be here. So thank you all for your efforts. Uh, on behalf of the whole agency of agriculture, Secretary Tebbets, Deputy Secretary Eastman, um, we all appreciate your, your work and um, always invite you to reach out to us anytime for other similar projects. Um, and again, yes, this used and otherwise unused uh, publicly funded piece of infrastructure and we're seeing it being used in a way that benefits the community um, in, in really innovative ways, creating a model for other regions. So um, thank you, thank all of you and Susan. I can't wait to look at it. All right. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much, Allie. Um, yeah, with that said, there's so much more I could obviously talk about. You ready to go another hour? No, I'm just kidding. Um, so Chris Duff, I pointed out earlier, that's our facility operator. He's going to tour you around. But I've hopefully introduced enough of you that you know now who everyone else is. So ask each other questions. Talk amongst yourself about the different ways that your organizations work together or don't or should be. Um, and then we will circle back here after the tour, and Ellie will have some little fun things, and we'll have some closing remarks. So ask Chris as many questions as you can. Thanks, everyone. You know, today's a day for us, you know, to be grateful, and there's a lot to be grateful for. And you know, besides the, you know, all, all that collaboration that took place, which I have to tell you, I stepped into this after all that. <laughs> so I got hired after Susan and Ellie and Joyce and everybody hammered through all that crazy stuff. And, they, and so I think I had the easy end of the job. But um, so we got this great grant and we were able to do a lot of things. And this is actually, you know, one of the big pieces of the grant that we were able to do which um, made a huge difference in this whole function of this operation. Um, so as of July last year, we had to start accepting food scraps at our transfer stations. So we have at all of our transfer stations uh, some green totes, which, which I'll show you in a little bit. People can come in, they dump their, their food scraps in there, they pay a dollar, and once a week I go around with a trailer and pick up those totes. They come here, I've already prepared a bed of uh, my primary materials, feedstock that I'll put in, and I tip those totes in here. That's where the food scraps go. I build a recipe with whatever quantity of food scraps I have um, based on the feedstocks I have available, and that's my compost pile. I'll build it right here in this bay, and then I'll move it into the other bays. So the tour is going to kind of roll around in a circle here, and I'll talk about things as we go. But this is where everything starts right here. I pull in on Mondays, dump all the food scraps here, make my recipe, build it, and then we move over here. So this, as Susan mentioned, this was designed by James McSweeney, this, this ASP, which is uh, short for Aerated Static Pile Composting System. And because we had a small footprint, we couldn't do windrow composting. As well, the aerated static pile system is a little bit quicker. We can make, we can turn out compost quicker and on a much smaller footprint. So when James designed this, um, he initially designed these bays for, you know, three tons of food scraps a week. Um, we've found from accepting some commercial hauling already, we can take as much as 10 tons a week without an additional buildup already, which is pretty exciting for us. We did not know that when we started. So. Uh, currently, we're taking anywhere from a half to three quarters of a ton of food scraps from our facilities. Um, we're open to commercial hauling right now, so we're starting to outreach to um, some of the haulers in the area, some of the you know big 
trash haulers who have to start diverting soon, as well as some of the organic haulers who just focus on organics. And their uh, black dirt was bringing us some loads last year, which was great because then I really found out what the capacity of these, uh, this place was. Um, so I build my recipe, my pot, I make my recipe, I add that far bay where Ellie is standing, uh, those are all my feedstock. So those are the different ingredients that I'll add into whatever recipe and I base that on, you know, carbon, nitrogen, moisture, um, bulk density, all these pieces I have to add up to make sure that I've got a recipe that's going to heat, that's going to do what I need it to do. So. Uh, I'll pull from that far bay, bring it over, mix, do my, my blend, shake it up with the wheel loader. I don't have the privilege of, that Dan has of this really sweet mixer that he just dumps it all into and everything comes out mixed already. So I have to, you know, throw it back and forth a bit with the wheel loader. And then I move it over here, um, or one of these. This is the prime, what I call my primary ASP, these three bays. So this is where it comes first. Um, I build it in, I get my fans turned on based on the volume, um, and it stays in there about three weeks. I have to monitor it fairly regularly for temperature and moisture, um, and so thus the probes, and you can go take a look at those, you know, right now the temperatures are running pretty good. Um, they'll stay in here for about three weeks, which is about how long um, <laughs> they heat for, you know, at the high heat. And when that heat starts falling off, I'll move them down into the what I call the secondary ASP down here. So these are all, in the past three weeks, these are all the piles that have been built. And this, this is the most current one. And this is uh, about uh, two thirds of a ton of food scraps to give you an idea of what you know, volume looks like. That's also blended though with several yards of other materials. Could you describe the uh, grommeted uh, plugs that you Oh yeah, this is great. That looks and, and thanks to Brian and, and company for this little, Jason helped me with it. So, I didn't know that. let's come all the way back here to the first one, you can see it better. That's, I'm, I'm doing an experiment right now, Brian. That's why you can't see them as well on the other ones. But these, uh, these pipes, these four inch pipes, um, have <clears throat> holes in them that the fans are behind the wall. We'll get a look at those in a little bit, but um, the air is forced through these pipes. And because I have different sized piles from week to week, I, I have these holes that are already existing. And so I have to plug the ones that are out here so I just all my air doesn't blow out. So I keep it in the pile. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> Brian, Brian's uh, colleague, Jason, I was at a conference with him recently, and he found these things called top hats, which I never knew about, in, at, at some company. And yeah, that's so I just plugged those recently. Yeah. Good luck. Versatility. Oh, it's great. Hat. It's yeah. super. Yeah. So, Chris, when, yes. when you got to move that file down okay. the line, yeah. What are you do? looking onto this threaded rod to get your yeah. yeah your so on the far end of this pile there's a um, there's a, a, a hose <coughs> clamp that I can disconnect the fan mm -hmm. from I can I, with the wheel loader I just put a chain around this and it slides right out it just slides right yeah. out of here and that gives me full access to the pile so I can just come in with the wheel loader and move it and do whatever I need to thanks for asking that question Brian. <laughs> So, yeah, so this is the primary. This is my first. Those are good questions. If anybody else sees something that goes, huh, please ask me. Um, you don't see the plugs here, and this is an experiment I'm doing. Um, I was having to add a lot of wood chip to create a plenum for the air, and um, it was throwing off the uh, recipe of my piles, so I reversed my pipes so I could reduce the amount of wood chip that I was putting into the pile. It's an experiment, it's a new one, so I, it, it, they are, the piles are still heating the way they should be, so one of the goals I have to reach for the state to be a certified facility is I have to reach a thing called PFRP, which, uh, which is the path for further reduction of pathogens. And I have to hold my temperatures at 130 degrees plus for three days straight. And that's one of the requirements. 
the reason we have a secondary ASP and the reason I like it actually is because some of the piles around, around the edges aren't heating sufficiently. And I know that. So when I bring them into the secondary ASP, that all gets rolled around again and a lot of that gets added back into the middle of the pile. So, mm. so, so even though I'm not required, I'm making sure that I'm hitting PFRPs again here in this pile. Um, so yeah, this is a secondary ASP. And then once it's been in here, uh, more or less three weeks, um, I will actually have, you know, before I started getting full here, and this, this is not really full, but using every bay, I was actually flipping it again and trying to hit those temperatures a third time just to make sure all the material is getting hit. Um, so after it's been in here another three weeks, um, let's walk through this way, and then you can get a, uh, we can look at the fans. I can show you how the fans work. So I don't know if everybody can see this at once. You can look down on either bay. So these are the fans that uh, I control inside the shop, the office shop, and I can control them on a, a number of different levels. I have timers on them, but I also have a rheostat that allows me to control the flow, how much air is, is being pushed through. Right now my piles are fairly small, so I'm, I'm not really needing to use as much uh, uh, fan power and uh, time as I, as I would if, the, if we were starting to fill those bays. Um, but this is, I just wanted you to get a look at these though, the fan system. Um, they work real well, it's a great system. When the piles have been in there for a few weeks, and they're starting to lose temperature in the secondary ASP, they come over into what I call the curing bay. And this is where they come and they just sit here. I try to flip them again at least once just to you know keep the temperatures up if I can for a little bit. They're still heating when they come over here. I, I did some monitoring this morning. That far pile is 130 plus degrees still. Um, so they'll, they'll stay here. This is where I'll start combining piles too. So, you know, piles in a recent time frame will all get combined together. Um, for now, you know, right now we're nowhere near capacity, so I have the privilege of having space. Um, from there, it goes into what I call the finish pad. And this is finished compost. This is no longer heating. It's at ambient temperature. Um, it's, and this is ready for screening. So this will be screened. Actually, tomorrow we'll have a screener come in. And then, as Susan mentioned, sales start tomorrow. Well, the, we're taking orders tomorrow. And over here, I mentioned is this is our feedstock shed. Um, I have different materials to work with. At different times of year, I have other materials as well. Right now, I've got some heifer manure, hay, sawdust, horse manure, and then some what I call saw chip, which is from a firewood processor. It's a really fine wood chip. It's a great chip for uh, composting with. Um, different times of the year, I may have leaves in there. I'd like to get more leaves. I'd like to, you know, incorporate that piece of the solid waste of taking the organic waste, the leaves, the chip from our stump dump. So we want to start incorporating all that into the process. I also use shredded paper a lot whenever I can get a hold of it. Um, but, you know, I don't use it in huge quantity, but it's a nice little carbon additive, especially if I have wet material. Um, so, yeah, so that's my feedstock, um, and that's the process. Let's walk over to the shed, though, and I can show you the control box. That's kind of interesting as well. How are you doing with PLU contamination? <laughs> Someone would have to bring that up, wouldn't they? Of course they? I have to bring that up. <laughs> <laughs> so I had a question, how do, I do, how, how do I deal with PLU contamination? And I don't know if everybody knows what PLUs are, but those are those just insipid stickers that are on every piece of fruit and and they're just horrible um, it's an issue and so I would Ellie is the one who has really done the most work on that Ellie's a, she, she's been amazing and with all of this outreach I've actually have noticed a decline in our PLUs coming in you know, um, Ellie's been really putting the word out in, on social media, front porch forum, you know, all sorts of things. And I've seen a decrease in the last month or two on PLUs. But right now we have this great program. Ellie has this great program going 
where I think we can. Ben, do you guys still have something like this going with PLUs? Yeah. yeah. So people can fill this cart up with PLUs and bring it in and drop it off at, at one of our facilities. And then once a month, we're having a drawing. And we're giving something away. We don't know why yet. Don't we? Give something away. And it's a t-shirt. So, yeah, just more. I thought you were trying to, like, you you try to get the stores to stop putting there. Oh, do that, too. That's actually, it's, the, it's like, the many, it's already pumps when they get Yeah, but, it, but if we could stop it at the source, that would be even better. Are the paper that's, ones? That's, 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 your guy, that's your guy's work, isn't it? Which there are a lot, a lot of them yeah. are. Possible. They must be because a lot of them are Carl not Carl Hammer and I have through. played with them at great lengths. Yeah. A lot so the paper of ones are okay? <laughs> All you're getting is a little bit of the bananas. That was a good question, though. PLUs are, they're, they're probably my biggest headache. Mm -hmm. um, as far as contamination goes in our pile, we're really fortunate. Our... Um, you know, we have attendance at all of our facilities where the food scraps come in, and they've just been amazing at really educating the people that come in, and they've been amazing at, you know, picking it out if they see it. So my contamination, you know, I think we've taken in 38 tons so far since we started. My contamination is a five-gallon bucket so wow. far. I mean, I'm screening this week, so I'm sure more will get kicked out. But... That's pretty impressive for you know what we've taken in, and it has a lot to do with Ellie, and it has a lot to do with um, our, our attendants being really on on board with this. So anyway, it goes into the finishing bay. I wanted to show you the the, the fans control. So it's a slow process. This is all we have to show for so far, but we, as you can see, there's a lot coming around the pipe still, and what will be available too. So this is the shop where we keep the wheel loader and other sundry. Uh, just for people to look, you probably recognize them, most people, but those are the totes that we use to at our facilities. People come and, t and dump into them, and that's what I will pick up each week, those green totes on a trailer. Um, Brian is standing right in front of my control box, <laughs> and you're welcome to come in. I mean, and this, this controls each one of those fans individually. Um, I'm able to uh, up the time, up the flow rate of air, and uh, it's pretty sweet. It's a nice system. It, it works well. I can pretty much set it, walk away, monitor the piles, and if I'm seeing changes or something that's not working, I can. It's a very easy switch um, to control them. But so that's the short tour I guess I could take a lot longer but did anybody have any other questions or yep Dan what's your capacity if you're said you're at 30 tons this last 38 tons this past year do you know what you could do annually yeah. uh, well I'd have to do some math I don't have that off the top of my head I think we our capacity could be 10 tons a week so you know yeah uh, based on you know when black dirt they were bringing me five tons a week and I was seeing how much space I had left in each of those bays, and I think I could easily do 10 tons a week. And that's without the buildup that James had designed, because they can take another whole tier of blocks, and then I had, I, you know, I mean, my capacity could be even, my limitation then would be feedstock storage, and then, you know, curing area. So. So how much uh, did you add? How much new? Uh, That's a really good question. Buildings are original, but then you have underground system for the fans. It, well, it just goes out pipes and then down out of the fan. But yeah, that's a really good question. So when we arrived here, um, actually, there's a great little video there or a slideshow. But when we arrived here, um, the trees were you know three to four inches. You know, all the way around the edge, um, some of the building was obscured by trees. The door was broken, the window was broken, the fence was twisted, and, you know, it had been sat empty for a long time, and people came down here and, you know, played around. You know, I don't, I don't even want to say kids, because it could have been adults. Um, but it was a mess of sorts, but the infrastructure itself, the buildings were all here, and very sound, and so that's when we realized, wow, this is really worth it. And so for a very small amount of work, replacing some windows, doors, 
a little gravel down, uh, fixing some fences. We were able to get this place up running and running really easily, relatively. And then, all, of course, all the blocks went into place, too. We put those into place. Hey, thanks, Chris. You got it. Yeah, no, thanks. And thanks, everybody, for coming and, and actually for helping out in somewhere. Oh, yeah. All right. So um, I hope you were all wildly impressed with what you saw today with what we've done with these precious federal dollars. We recognize that these are your dollars, our dollars, everybody pays taxes. And uh, we know that those dollars are really hard to come by. So once again, to our federal delegation that believes in economic development, infrastructure development, believes in what we're doing here in waste management specifically, and um, appreciate them marshaling some of those dollars towards us. Um, I just wanted to know, does anybody have any questions or things that we didn't cover already today? Now is your chance. Or you know how to get a hold of us. Yes, Kathy. I want the recipes. <laughs> all right. Here's what you should know about the cookies. I was up all night cooking them. So not true. Sweet Crunch in Hyde Park is world famous, right, for their maple cookies. They are shipped all over the world. I believe, yeah, you can get them in D.C. <laughs> I'm not sure, did anyone talk about the grant, how much it was? $4.7 million. That's all it took. Oh, oh, wait, wait, I'm just kidding. $50,000. So it was a 50% match grant, and we had requested 75. We were given 50. Our 50% match had already been... Um, uh, obligated by our board that passed a resolution, so we kept our 75000 We got 50000 So, you know, 50000 is a lot of money. I can't come up with 50000 But if you think about the big picture, it's not a lot of money. So just, again, what we can do with a small amount of money in a rural area have a huge impact. The plumbing work, the electrical, the supplies were all purchased locally. Uh, and, and rough numbers, Chris, but we probably spent seven or eight thousand dollars on plumbing, another ten or twelve on on electrical. These are people who earned money here this past year, and then they go to the mini mart and the grocery store and the co-op and they spend that money. So the money keeps circulating, and that's really a huge um, multiplier when you think of that fifty thousand. So, um, I, I, those are just some fun little facts. Any other questions? Okay, so um, we thought we might have a representative from Senator Leahy's office coming through. They're touring around with the Ag Appropriations Committee. We're hoping that we, they would throw money at us like everyone else has. But anyway, they're not going to be here. They do send their regards and wish they could be here. Um, and I think, you know, really, um, now that we have our feet underneath us a little bit and we actually have some compost to grow with, and it's going to be available very shortly, um, you know, we're off and running. We serve the residential population right now, but we have been courted by and are courting some commercial entities. And so at some point, these smaller piles are going to be right up full to the brim of those concrete blocks. And we're really excited about bringing in more material. Um, anyway, that's it. I don't want to keep you all too long unless anyone has anything else to say. But I do want Ellie to come up and talk to you a little bit about what is in your swag bag and... Um, she may have some other comments for you as well. So it's really important to support locally. So what's in your bag is a pair of wheelhouse design socks that are designed in Morrisville. We have uh, high mowing seeds that are from Walkit. We have a sticker of our logo for you to put someplace fun. And if you do Instagram, we have a contest going on Instagram right now. If you see our photo out and about, if you see our logo out and about, take a photo, tag us on Instagram, and you could win one of our Lamoille Soil Collection Kits. Or if we could negotiate, if <laughs> something else. Um, there's also an I Love Soil sticker. It's not super local, but it is from the U.S. Composting Council. Um, our story is in here for you, printed in stow. And our trifold brochure. We used great big graphics in Morrisville for our design and printing. And thanks again, Nina and High Meadows, for funding that for us. We, it, it has really motivated us, and it's pretty, pretty stinking cool. It's a good-looking logo. And then you all get to take home our very first quart of finished <laughs> compost, Lamoille Soil Compost. 
So thank you very much for coming. We couldn't have done it without you. And enjoy. Don't forget. And in, when you pick up your bag, there, there are sock sizes. So we have kind of smalls and large. So help yourself. Our cards, uh, mine, Chris's, and Susan's business cards are on that table. The PLU cards are on that table. And we were featured in BioCycle Magazine in May. And that article is there as well. So thanks again. Cheers. Thank you.